So I recently noticed that a YouTuber that's been a huge influence on me and the way I do videos has started making videos again after a long hiatus, and that's theoretical bullshit. And one of the newest videos he did, he did with one of my all-time favorite Christian YouTubers, Veritas48. Now if you're not familiar with Veritas48, among Christian apologist YouTubers, he is probably the most intelligent and least mendacious. But a few years ago he did a video in which he made an argument that I thought was very silly, and I thought now would be a good time to bring it up. He made a video arguing in favor of mind-body dualism. And he made an argument that was sort of in response to the question of how it is that you can say that the mind and the brain are separate if you can point to neurological, neurochemical causes of various mental states like depression. And the argument that Veritas48 made was, well, look at it this way. Say there's a person inside of a car and the car is malfunctioning. From the outside, you can't tell if it's the car that's malfunctioning or if the person is just driving erratically. But that doesn't mean that there's not a distinction to be made between the way the car is functioning and the person inside of it. And the reason why I thought this analogy was pretty inadequate is that you can make changes to the function of a car without making changes to the function of the person driving it. You can't say the same thing about the relationship between the brain and the mind. Now it's been years since I've seen the video in which he made this argument. I don't even know if it's still on YouTube, if anybody can find it, or if anybody has it saved, send it to me. I'd love to see it again so I can get the argument straight. But this is the argument he made as I remember it. And the reason why a car and its driver is not analogous to the mind and the brain is that there's absolutely no aspect of the function of a mind that cannot be altered by making corresponding alterations to the brain. By either surgically or chemically altering the brain, you can alter the mind's perceptions, emotions, memories, judgments. You can alter the person's consciousness. You can alter the person's very identity. What's left? How can you say that there's a distinction between the mind and the brain where there's absolutely no function the mind has that cannot be altered by altering the corresponding functions in the brain? Now, I might accept this analogy and I might even give some credence to the idea of mind-brain dualism if you could show that there's some aspect of the mind that remains unchanged regardless of any changes to the brain. But the only example that a Christian could give or anybody who believes in the soul can give, is that although every aspect of the mind can be altered by altering the brain, if you completely destroy the brain, the mind escapes not only undestroyed, but also unaltered. But this, of course, is something that is impossible to prove. And to accept this example, you would have to already accept the idea of mind-body dualism. Also, you'd have to explain how it is that changing the brain changes the mind, but completely destroying the brain somehow frees the mind without in any way altering it. 